everyone welcome back to my channel today charlie and i are driving up to edinburgh my mum and my auntie julie are actually flying to edinburgh as we speak so they're going to have a whole extra day and we're driving up all the luggage but we're quite happy driving we love a road trip it's probably going to take us about seven to nine hours and obviously i'm pregnant so i have to stop and pee all the time and i get hungry all the time plus we're southerners so we're literally going from one end of the country to the other but this isn't actually our first time in Edinburgh. We've been here before. That was like our COVID holiday, wasn't it? When we couldn't go abroad. So we went up to Scotland, passing, um, what was it, Liverpool. We spent a night in Liverpool. Then we went up to Glasgow. And then we went to Isle of Skye. Then we went to Callender and Fort William. And then we finished off the trip in Edinburgh and then stopped off at Newcastle very briefly on the way back down home. But the absolute highlight was that Jacobite train, wasn't it? The, yeah. Uh, I don't actually know what was more fun to be honest, either chasing the train or riding the train. Yeah, they're both equal, I would say. Yeah. Scotland! Oh my god. We've only just arrived in Edinburgh and it's already starting to rain, so it's going to be a rainy day looking around today. We're starting by going to Greyfriars Bobby and also to the Kirk Churchyard, I think it's called. So there's the graveyard. There's Greyfriars Bobby Pub, and there's the OG Greyfriars over there with that massive crowd of people. That dog has just taken over this. <laughs> no, that doesn't count, you have to use your skin. <laughs> now I have good luck. <laughs> now I have everyone's now bacteria. I have germs. <laughs> <laughs> this is Victoria Street. Apparently, this gave JK Rowling inspiration for Diagon Alley. <laughs> This is one of the Harry Potter stops along here. Finally, Hermione in her righteous place. Miss Granger's done it. Charlie's just pointed out this Snuggles for Muggles baby grow and is expecting me not to buy it. How can I not? I'm so cute. And just like that, I've bought the baby grow. Next time, don't point it out if you don't want me to buy it. <laughs> so we're noticing it's a lot busier this year when we're visiting than two or three years ago. We think it's because we visited during COVID when people couldn't fly here. So there's a lot more tourists here now. <laughs> We've climbed up to Scott's Terrace Bar and now we're getting a really good overview of Victoria Street. We're having dinner here tonight at Queen's Arms. So I've gone for a mac and cheese pot and chips and everyone else has gone for Veggie different burger. burgers. Veggie burger for mum. <laughs> and beef burgers over here, they look amazing. Today my mum, my auntie, Charlie and I are all going to Edinburgh Zoo. Apparently the pandas have been at Edinburgh Zoo for nearly 10 years and they're due to leave in October. So this is kind of our last chance to go and see the pandas. So it cost £109.80 for four adults and a 10% donation. It is a conservation zoo, so we've kept that in. We would like to put money towards the animals. So the man that sold us the tickets recommended that we start at the zoo entrance and work our way up anti-clockwise up a steep hill towards the giant pandas, across this way and then back down again. He said that way you get the steep hill done out of the way first. Also some enclosures such as the koalas, the pandas and the sloths shut at half five as well as some of the indoor enclosures so you need to make sure you've seen them all before half five and the park shuts at six. It's open from 10am till 6pm and then obviously there's a list of all the amenities here.
winning with the zebras today. We're in the Chimp Research Centre. It teaches you a lot about their conservation. Oh look, there's someone working on it right now. What, what do you reckon it's turned that up? So cognitive abilities. Oh, there's another one coming out. Oh my word. Oh, he's pissing on him. Oh, oh no! Oh. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> so the wallabies are around, but they're not doing any dumping. They're kind of getting half of them. They look like they're on crutches. <laughs> yeah. They move faster than Dad. Skippy. Skippy? All kangaroos just call Skippy. Did they? Skippy the kangaroo friend. Skippy, Skippy, Skippy the kangaroo friend. Oh my gosh, we're approaching the pandas. <laughs> This panda is Tian Tian, who's quiet but mischievous. <laughs> Means sweetie in Mandarin, that's gorgeous. Oh, I must be the girl then. So this panda is called Yang Guang, a gentle giant. That's so cute. Oh, and it means sunshine. Why did they evolve to be black and white? It's a bit strange. Um, I have no idea. Apparently, the white colour provides camouflage in their snowy natural habitat and the black fur helps them blend in when they hide in shady bamboo forests. Giant pandas live in wet bamboo forests in the mountains of China. Oh my, oh my god. god, we've arrived at the, the penguins! The here. Charlie and I have tuned into the live That's, camera here it's before. That white thing okay. up there. Oh, it's that white thing? They look like they're having a summer holiday. Yeah. It actually does, doesn't it? They look like beach brownies. Yeah, I I Ibiza. Umbrellas. Apparently there's 120 penguins here. Really? Oh my god, that's amazing. Wow! They're chasing each other. Whoa! I didn't think penguins did that. Me neither! minute coffee break in between. So that marks the end of our visit. Edinburgh Zoo was amazing, 10 out of 10. So much to see. I've spent over 50 pounds in the gift shop. Very naughty. We bought this tiny little panda magnet. We wanted something that was specific to the pandas seeing as they're going back to China soon. And then Charlie and I also bought this little panda book. Today is our last day in Edinburgh. We're starting the day off with a tour of the underground Edinburgh vaults and we're just going to explore the city a little bit but it's all up in the air at the moment and we're just going to see how we go. I'm feeling extremely tired today and my legs and ankles are really hurting. We've done thousands of steps each day so far, so I'm not sure how far I'll actually be able to walk and Julie's also quite unwell today, so we might not get around a lot of the city today. We're just walking to our meeting point for the Underground Vaults tour. It starts at the Lawn Market and we're following old Reiki tours, so we'll see how it goes. We're currently just following our tour guide, Stuart. So we've just stood here and Stuart has given us a little speech. There are more than six and a half thousand bodies underneath this car park, apparently. I won't give too much away because if you come and do the tour, it's kind of fun just to hear the actual tour guides tell you what everything's about. But basically the vaults were a safe space for the poor people. It was safer for them down there. Uh, welcome. This is my bedroom. <laughs> I've never had this many women in here before, I'm slightly nervous. Um, but I do want to stress just how unsafe it was in the city centre and why so many people ended up hiding in the vaults themselves. So we're in one of the vaults now. <laughs> it smells in here. No. Don't know how people lived in this. It's like Charlie said, it was better than the alternative. Yeah, true. And I don't know if anyone's figured out where the toilet was. Everywhere, everywhere is completely spot on. So Stuart's just told us a horror story about this vault. It was a witch's vault and they built these rocks in the circle for safety. Basically he's daring us to stand in the middle because it's not deemed safe anymore. But he says he doesn't dare go in. Are you going to dare? Go of course you are, I knew it. Why? 
person who's sleeping in the bedroom has to go in too. Yeah. Why? That's what he said. Okay, our tour group has left. We're in here by ourselves. Spooky. Look how green we look. I know, it's, that's the only light that's on. We should go into the cameras. This experience is a 10 out of 10. Stuart was an amazing tour guide, so charismatic, so knowledgeable, 100% recommend. What did you think of the tour? I thought it was excellent. Really you liked it? it. Yeah, Would you recommend it to someone? Yeah, it quickly, didn't it? It yeah. did! It didn't feel like an hour. Yeah. I'd definitely recommend it. I would say that's my only complaint, is it felt a bit short. But you can book longer tours. We only booked a 60 minute tour. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe that's worth it then. You can book 90 minute tours, 75 minute tours, also night tours where they're meant to be haunted and freaky. Yeah. Stuart said you can book to sleep in the vaults if you are brave enough. Or rich enough, it costs hundreds. Apparently. Does it? Yeah. Blimey. Well, there you go. We're stopping for a little Costa break again. That looks nice, Charlie. So, okay. That's not a Costa. No. Traitor. An he is an imposter. An imposter, imposter. Who are you? A Costa imposter. You beat me to it. <laughs> so now we're just walking down Victoria Street, and then after that, we're going to pop into the castle. After climbing about a million horrible stairs, we've reached the top of the castle. Um, it's sold out for today. It's sold out? Yeah, you have to book it online before you come. Oh, okay. So we climbed up here for nothing. Yeah. Yay. Basically, if you're watching this vlog, you have to book everything in advance these days. Do not just expect to turn up and be able to go in. This is not the first time in this Edinburgh trip that we have been refused entry somewhere because we haven't pre-booked tickets. So just bear that in mind if you're coming to Edinburgh or pretty much anywhere, I think, in the UK, to be honest. You need to look online before you go anywhere and plan your exact itinerary. Yeah. And book everything pre-booked online. You can't do anything to stop a whim yeah, anymore. You can't. It's a shame, isn't it? So we're going into the camera obscura world of illusions now. Oh, you're touching it. That's strange. Can you make the light dance? There's a fork in there. What? There's a fork in there. I'm definitely not doing these moves. <laughs> <laughs> it has no idea what's going on. Clearly, no one's done that before. Charlie says maybe this is what our kid will look like. This or this? You look like a piece of artwork. <laughs> I'll just leave you there.